I'm going to have to work on that with something, I think. <laughs> and so um, in any event, uh, we've been a um, long time in coming for this committee. The council has asked for this. Um, last year, we were able to um, move this forward. Certainly, it's helping that it coincides with the um, start and kickoff of the um, pedest bike and pedestrian master plan process. So um, we know that this is time out of your personal and busy schedules. We want to make this um, an interesting time for you as well as the community. We want to be considerate of your time and not waste your time. Um, and we ask everybody to sort of follow those same general rules of um, ask, please ask questions. Um, if you've got questions in advance of the meeting, it's always fine to call staff and ask if you've got questions or we want you would like to have something talked about during the meeting it gives us a heads up so I know a lot of these conversations have occurred um, as you're doing your swearing in and your your uh, introduction stuff so again I'll leave it at that and just say again thank you um, that you were willing to serve um, and uh, hopefully you will consider this a great honor <laughs> it is an honor for us to work with you and to serve you and to help you through this process um, this is extremely important and we know through the general plan process to date these issues are one of the most um, highly um, energizing items um, in the in the community and they're really really excited about it and really want to move forward and, and these types of activities to get away from the car and um, to look at uh, multimodal transportation and this is a great first step so thank you again have a great evening and we look forward to working. Carol, and Carol will serve tonight uh, for this meeting as your chair. So, um, and then we'll allow you down the road to choose your chair and vice chair among yourselves. Thank you. Um, I'm Carol Hamilton, senior planner with the Community Development Department and I'll be the project manager for the bicycle pedestrian master plan process. Um, just a couple of uh, housekeeping items in case you're not familiar with this room. The restrooms are to your left here, to my left, and uh, down the hall. Um, also, we have uh, water, other beverages, and, and some light snacks for you to, if you want to just get up and, and help yourself at any time. Um, before we uh, start our agenda for this evening, uh, I'd like to have each of you uh, introduce yourselves and um, uh, tell us something about yourself uh, and uh, your interests that led you to want to participate in the work of this committee. And, and I'm going to start with Les. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the record? Okay. Name is uh, Les Man. I'm on the uh, Planning uh, Commission and uh, uh, I'm interested in this committee basically because I'm a uh, biker. I try to bike uh, almost every day and uh, we have some trails, we have uh, some roads, we have some dangerous spots and uh, hopefully I can bring back uh, information, I can provide you with feedback and together we, this group, the Planning Commission, can provide the uh, City Council with some excellent uh, recommendations to help all of us go forward in this endeavor. My name is Bill Murray, and uh, I'm a Montero resident and uh, work in downtown Half Moon Bay. Um, I've been a, a bike commuter for uh, um, at least a decade, a little bit longer or so, and use the coastal trail and uh, other uh, surface streets, access roads, and uh, dirt paths, and all sorts of, of ways to get down here. Um, and uh, so I hope I have a little bit to uh, contribute to um, improving the uh, bike routes and uh, safety and enjoyment of uh, bike commuters. Good evening, my name is Mario Rendon and I live um, in downtown at Cypress Cove. So pretty much once the cars pull into the garage, um, I am walking everywhere and that's especially more important on weekends. And so um, I think my interest was just in getting more involved and engaged with the community. Um, but certainly in terms of from a, from a getting out of the car into a pedestrian perspective, 
Um, safety, I think, is a big issue for me in terms of just, uh, especially early mornings and weekends. Um, and so that's kind of the perspective I'd like to bring. I don't have a name tag, but I'm Paul Gaser. Um, my, my accent might suggest otherwise, but I have actually lived in the US since 1993. Um, I've lived in Half Moon Bay since 1999. I've ridden bikes pretty much all my life. Um, I live in Frenchman's Creek. I'm a road rider most of the time. Um, weekend warrior with occasional midweek riding. Um, use the coastal trail a lot, so I'm quite aware of the coastal um, trail systems we have around here. And this was something I really sort of felt, feel passionately about in terms of improving facilities for cycling and for walking, and that's why I wanted to join this committee. Um, I've been a biker since breaking away. I had a Peugeot, and I just kept riding it and riding it until it broke down, and then I got a mountain bike, and then I kept riding my mountain bike until I broke down, and now I ride cruisers, pedal assist cruisers named Daisy particularly, but I love bikes. I also walk a lot, so I'm happy to be on this committee. It's really exciting. Hi, I'm Adrienne Etherton. I am a resident of Half Moon Bay for about six years now. I lived in the downtown area in Amesport Landing for uh, the first four years of that time. And a couple of years ago, my husband and I were fortunate enough to buy a house in the Sea Haven neighborhood um, on the east side of Highway 1. So uh, as much as we can, we have always enjoyed trying to get out of the car and walk and bike around town. Um, and since having moved to Sea Haven, we found that that's uh, less, feeling less safe to do. Uh, so I'm very interested in trying to find ways for our neighborhoods on the east side of Highway 1 to be able to get around more safely. I would not say I'm an avid cyclist. I'm more of a, a cruiser and flip-flops to the farmer's market kind of gal. Um, but I, uh, we also have two dogs, so we do a lot of walking and biking. Um, of course, I'm here representing myself as a community member, but in my day job, I am the executive director of Sustainable San Mateo County, which is a local nonprofit organization that tries to educate the community about ways to, to build a more sustainable community. So I'm very interested also in traffic congestion reduction, greenhouse gas emission reductions, um, and making it more possible for more people to get out of their cars, um, to get to school, to work, uh, and get around town. So um, kind of some dual interests there. Very much. We have a great, uh, a great group here for the, for the job at hand. Um, I'm going to do a roll call now, and that's something we're going to do every, uh, every meeting, um, just to put on the record that you're here. Uh, Adrian? Here. Ethington? Um, Michelle Dragady? Here. Les Damon? Here. Bill Murray? Here. Mario Rendon? Here. Paul Gator? And Carlene Foldenauer is absent. And Elizabeth Brown is also absent. Uh, I just wanted to, um, for the folks that are in the audience, uh, I wanted to let you know that we would be having public comment uh, with every, following every item that we talk about on the agenda this evening. So feel free to participate uh, during those times. And at this time, I'm going to introduce to you our uh, consultants, uh, Dara O'Byrne and Hugh Lausch, who with Alta Planning and Design, and they will be our consultants for the Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan process and are going to lead us through uh, this evening's activities. There we go. Can you hear me? Well, thanks so much for having us here. My, my name is Dara O'Byrne, and I work with Alta Planning and Design as a planner. Um, and we're really excited to be working with you as um, a BPAC, as the Advisory Council. Um, and we're excited to see so many people from the community joining us as well tonight. <clears throat> so we have a pretty full agenda, and I just um, want to We've already kind of done welcome and introductions. Uh, we're gonna go give an overview of why we're here. You guys are here for a larger, um, kind of a larger vision for the community, but the, the, the task that we're really involved in is coming up with a bicycle and pedestrian master plan. And so that's what we're gonna be focused on here tonight and over um, 
you know, the next year or so. Um, and so we're going to be talking about some of the things that we've been working on with staff that we want to get your feedback on before we move ahead. Um, and we're, those things include reviewing our outreach and engagement strategy, um, going over some of the policy uh, that the city already has related to bicycle and pedestrians. And then we really want to take some time to get your input and do an existing conditions workshop. And so that's going to be an opportunity to have an activity around a map um, and get our hands dirty a little bit. And I think it's also going to be a great opportunity to re us really, for us to really hear from you about your perspective. And um, of course, those in the audience will be able to participate as well. And then we'll, we'll talk about next steps. So I know that you all have had um, individual meetings with Carol and Jill about your role um, as uh, committee members. Um, and so I just wanted to talk a little bit about your role um, in terms of the, the um, bicycle and pedestrian master plan update and what we're hoping um, and how we're hoping to work with you. So we're hoping that you will advise the city and the consultant team throughout the bicycle and pedestrian master plan and that you will assist us with outreach and engagement. We really see you as you have much better connections within the community than we do as consultants. You know how to reach different audiences so we're really looking um, for you all to help us um, both design the outreach and, 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 and also help reaching your neighbors and the people that you know, your networks within the community. Uh, we're hoping that you'll provide input both um, based both on your personal experiences, but also on if you're representing your neighborhood or larger groups um, within, within Half Moon Bay. And then we're hoping that you'll provide feedback on draft materials as we produce them. So that's how we're, we're hoping that we can work on this project together. So just a quick overview on what a bicycle and pedestrian master plan is. Um, we are working um, within the larger framework of Plan Half Moon Bay, which I'll talk about in just a little bit, but we are going to be coming up with recommendations for bicycle and pedestrian network within, the, within Half Moon Bay to improve safety, comfort, and connectivity. So the plan will result in specific projects, uh, recommendations that will be prioritized, and we'll go through a process of prioritizing those projects with cost estimates. And then some of those um, projects will have, we'll, we'll be able to carry forward with a specific recommendation and in other cases we'll have to um, recommend further study if um, additional engineering and things like that need um, to be done because this is a planning document. So not every project um, is going to be able to go through full, you know, is going to be able to have design and engineering. So in some cases from a planning perspective we'll recommend further study. Um, and then we'll also make recommendations for programs. Um, we know that for for um, active transportation programs that provide education around safety and active transportation that provide encouragement activities, enforcement and evaluation are really important. So it'll also include um, programs. And the way that we're going to uh, create this master plan is really a combination of community input, working with you folks, and then going out to the community through workshops and other activities, and combining that with technical analysis. Um, and so it's an iterative process going um, back and forth between the community input, technical analysis, checking in with the community again. And you guys are going to be a really important part of that process. So just to give a little bit more um, about our approach to the project, uh, some of the key, key pieces, as I mentioned, we're going to be engaging the community. And tonight we really want feedback on different ways to do that. We have an outline for how to do that, but we want, we want some more of your feedback. We're going to be developing uh, goals and policies that will help guide um, how we determine what are appropriate projects that make it into the plan. The goals and policies are the overall things that are going to guide the plan. We're going to be evaluating existing conditions. So what do you have here in Half Moon Bay right now? What's working and what's not working? And that's what we want to start getting your input on tonight and that we'll be getting input from the community on as well. Then we'll be assessing needs. So based on the, all of the, both our assessment um, from a technical perspective, looking at everything um, of existing conditions and then input from you and the community, 
will do a needs assessment, which will really look at um, facilities and programs and understanding what the needs are there, um, needs for improvement or um, new facilities. We'll do a safety analysis to better understand where key safety concerns are and then a demand analysis. So in some cases when we're looking at things, we don't necessarily, if you're only looking at existing conditions, you're looking at what people are using today, but where is there demand for people that would, would use something if it was safer or if there was a facility available. And then from all of that information, again, we'll work um, with you and the community to come up with a recommended network. And that will include those prioritized projects, cost estimates, ways to fund the different projects. Um, and then we'll come up with both a, a draft plan that will uh, then be reviewed and then we'll have a final plan. And here's a, a very high level project schedule. So you'll see that in about a year, we should have our, our, final, our final plan I'm hoping, oh, that's helpful. Thank you, Jill. <laughs> that's great. Um, All the rest was just words. So. Yeah, you didn't need to see that. But this, this is helpful to see. So we're, we're definitely in that, you know, establishing goals and policies phase, evaluate existing conditions. You can see right there, you know, May, June time. And then we're going to start assessing needs, um, go through the, and come up with a recommend. We're going to recommend a network, and then we're going to actually craft the plan itself. And then there's um, a lot of different community engagement, which I'm gonna um, talk about in a minute in more detail and get your feedback on. But you can see that the community engagement goes throughout the, throughout the process and their meetings with you all uh, are up there as well. So I do think it's really important to mention, and I think I already mentioned that, um, that we are really working to build off of the plan Half Moon Bay project that the city has been engaged on. Um, working on and has draft materials that we're really hoping to build from. So we're working to build on planning work done to date. We're working, we want to work with you to both update where appropriate and confirm the draft policies. Um, we want to take all of the outreach that was a part of that process and really learn from that and um, learn from the comments and the feedback because we understand that there Bicycle and pedestrian access was talked about um, quite a bit. So we are working to, we're, we're using the general plan principles as a starting point to think about this plan. Um, and then we're also making sure that everything is integrated with the local coastal land use plan. And then in addition to that, um, we are working in a coordination, we're collaborating with the parks master plan update. So they are in a, they're a little bit ahead of us in terms of schedule, but we're working um, on collaborating on engagement efforts. We're really making sure that we're collaborating and following what each other are doing because there's so much connection between um, parks and they're looking at recreation. Um, and we will also be looking at recreation and trails. So we really wanna make sure that these two processes build off of each other. And so we've actually created a, um, let me see if I can do this, a joint website, which I just wanted to show you really quick because it's gonna be a great resource for you, but for you to also point your neighbors to, um, your networks to, people that you work with, for information on both processes. And we're calling it Half Moon Bay Outdoors. Um, so it covers both the parks plan and the um, bicycle and pedestrian master plan as well. So for our purposes and for the parks plan, you'll see you know, when there's um, workshops or other information coming up, it'll all be on this website. And as we start to have draft materials, it'll be up here. Um, and also the, the parks plan will be updating it as well. So we're, we're hoping to really make sure that this, this stays up to date and that this is gonna be a great resource for you and for you to point people to if they want more information. <clears throat> back and I'm sorry that is that's the web suit <laughs> that's the, it is live yes so as I mentioned the parks um, planning process is a little bit in advance of ours so they already have been working with their committee is it a committee Carol uh, commission I'm sorry thank you 
um, with their commission um, and they have had their first public meeting already. Um, and they are in the process of gathering their existing conditions and coming up with recommendations. So they're a few months ahead of us. So we actually uh, kind of collaborated on this website right when we started. So it's been live um, and all the information is up there. You'll start seeing more of our information um, being put in there uh, soon as, as we start to have more information to share and we start planning for our first public engagement efforts and things like that. So there's more information on the parks plan right now, but we will be um, putting more information for us on it. And that is the web address, Half Moon Bay Outdoors, hmvoutdoors.com. So now I wanted to talk and get your feedback on what we have proposed for our outreach and engagement strategy. Um, as I mentioned, we are working to coordinate that with the parks master plan, so we're working we attended their first public meeting just to, per, to announce that we will be starting this. We're hoping to collaborate and do some joint meetings and joint um, exercises or community pop-up events and things like that. So this is a very high level graphic. I see you squinting your eyes. It's fine. We, it's, it's very high level, but the idea is that we're going to try to do coordinated events when we can. Um, so in the outreach and engagement strategy that we've proposed um, that we want your feedback on, from an outreach perspective, we're really building off of what the city already has in terms of a network and email addresses, and we're trying to build on that in terms of reaching people to let them know about events, to let them know about what's happening and draft materials. Um, and in addition to that, we're going to be using social media and um, you know, posting things in newsletters and things like that. But if you all have ideas of specific things that you know will work better for your neighborhood or your community, we definitely want to know that because um, we know that you, you know this community um, really well and you'll know how to reach people effectively. So if you have thoughts on that, we definitely want to know. And then from an engagement strategy, uh, I'm going to go through a series of, we have public workshops planned. Um, right now that we want to get your feedback on with the first one being you know in the July uh, time frame um, we have planned some stakeholder interviews that we want to have your feedback on uh, we have a bike and walking tour that we'd like to do with you um, and then opening that up and then we also have some kind of pop-up community events that we're going to want your feedback on that I'll talk about in a minute and then Really, um, the first kind of out, it's both outreach and engagement because we're hoping to get a lot of great feedback is an online survey that we have, has not live yet. Um, we wanted to show it to you and get your feedback on it. Um, and then we're hoping to go live with it fairly soon before our first public meeting and then leave it open for a couple of months. And again, this, the, the point of this survey being so early on in the process is to get feedback on existing conditions. What is working, um, what isn't working, what people think really needs to be improved. So I, I wanted to show you what we have right now and get your feedback on it. So this is the way it would look right now. And again, we would be sending this out um, with a live link um, by email, we would have it on our website, we would ask you to share it with your networks. Um, but the idea here is you, you come to the home page and it talks about what, you know, that we're starting this bicycle and pedestrian master plan and that we want um, people's feedback on um, what they think about the existing conditions in Half Moon Bay. So you would click and you'd say get started. And this is um, an opportunity where you can zoom in on the map and all these points are us testing it. None of them mean anything. <laughs> you'll, you'll even see points that, yeah, that don't make any sense. So this is not, it's not live, it's just in development. But basically you, you can draw a route to indicate routes that you currently use or that you like. Um, and so once you draw it, you have the opportunity. So I'm gonna say, let's say, you just draw um, a line here. 
And then it asks you if you use it for walking or biking. Let's say I currently use it for walking. And then you can mark reasons you use the route. Is it because it has a sidewalk and it's safe? Um, is it because it's, it's just the most direct route and that's why I use it? Or do you use it for recreational purposes? And if none of those apply, then you can type in something for other. And then you can save your point or save your line in this case. And then you can go back and continue adding. So you can draw um, routes for things that you use and that you like, for things that you don't like or you think need improvement. Um, you can add barriers, so areas that you think you, know, you can't go but you would like to go. And then um, adding destinations that you wish you could walk to or bike to but you don't currently. Um, and then for each one, let's say if I was adding a barrier, you can say um, it's a barrier for walking, it's a bar barrier for biking, or it's a barrier for biking and walking. And then you can choose one of the reasons why you think it's a barrier or choose other. And so basically the idea is we're, we're trying to get as much feedback from folks about what is working or not working in Half Moon Bay so that as we then begin planning for the future network, we can um, work to address some of those issues. <clears throat> yeah. What's that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so Hugh is pointing out that, let's say I add a point. Well, here, I'll show it an existing point. Um, we have it set up so that you can comment on somebody else's point. So instead of having to add a million points at the same thing that everybody wants to comment on, you can say, I agree, um, you know, I agree, I, you know, this, this is a really difficult spot, I f don't feel safe, and then it would build, all the comments would build off of that one point. Or you can also, like Facebook, you can like a comment, and that also kind of records it. So it's just another feature of the, of the survey. You can also just add one as well. And then at the end, it gathers, um, once you've, let's say, I'm gonna just choose something, and then you say save. Then there's um, complete the survey, and then we ask a few questions about the person filling out the survey. Um, just so we get a little bit more information about the folks filling out the survey. Um, are they, you know, do they bike, do they not bike, do they, how old are they, um, and just some demographic information that helps us understand if we're getting a diverse response or if we're only getting responses from one segment of the population and then we maybe need to do, target our outreach a little differently. Um, and we've done a lot of these kinds of surveys and um, they're really helpful to just provide a good picture that everybody that's filling out the survey can see what everybody else is saying too. And then when we have those results, we can share them. So with that, I just want to kind of open it up to see if you have thoughts about how it's working right now. Like I said, it's draft. We're looking for feedback. The city's going to have more time to provide feedback as well before it goes live. So just wondering what you all think, if you have specific thoughts or comments. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, let's go back to that. Um, yeah, so if, if um, let's say I'm just going to take a route like this. I click once and then I can carry it over and then I can go down and then if you double click it stops it. So you can draw your full route. That was a totally on the fly, <laughs> sorry, it's not even on a road. Um, but yeah, so then, so then you can add your route. And the one thing I, as I was just going through this live, I noticed that we might, um, I'm not sure how we want to do if we want to have, I use it for walking and biking for this one, because we had it for the barriers, so that might be something that we want to add, because um, I'm sure there are routes that people do both on. And there's, you know, there's opportunity to refine these as well. And again, we can provide the link to this if you want to play with it um, and provide feedback. 
And then all of these random things that we're adding, while it, it'll go away before it goes live. So this will not be part of the official record. <laughs> okay. You mean on the demographic part of it? I clicked on barrier before. Do you want to look at that one? So these questions. You'd be able to, yeah. Adrienne had a point, and then I. Oh, yeah, I'm I had a question actually, and I think it might have escaped me. Uh, uh, kind of um, can you select multiple options um, on the barriers reasons why? Um, and then the question, um, uh, other question was around when this does go live, um, so if I'm a user coming in for the first time and, and a lot of other people have already drawn and commented, will I see all of theirs? Can I make all of theirs go away so I can see where I'm going fresh? Or is there a way to kind of toggle that on and off for people? Uh, I could see it getting kind of crowded. It, it and might tough be possible. We can with. look into that and okay. see if it's possible. We, you, you know, it, it's a trade off, I think, where we wanted people to have the ability to kind of comment, you know, and, and react to one another Absolutely. a little bit versus, um, you know, just doing it fresh. A lot of times people will do these where you can, o they only see their own, but then, you know, it's it's that trade off. So we can look at seeing if that's possible to turn off. Yeah, it probably maybe, on the, maybe on the map legend, there'd be an opportunity to turn it off. But I also think when you zoom in, um, the, it, it, the, like the line weight doesn't stay, it, it goes into so you'd be able to I think you'd always be able to add your own. Okay. Um, but I think it's a good point. We could look into that. I, I like it. It looks very, seems on the face of it, quite simple and intuitive to use. I kind of have a, a techie question, which is whether you can sync it up somehow to, to roots in, in apps like Strava. So you can save yourself doing all the drawing by actually linking it to an app. Uh, that's interesting. Like, <laughs> Techie <tech> question. <laughs> yeah, no, th no, those are those are great questions. Um, you know, at this point, no, like we, there's nothing to like sort of port in like something that yeah. you use all the time. Yeah. But it's we can we can look into that because I know Strava has like it can push out data. Can, I think yeah. in a standard yeah. format, and yeah. it's just whether or not you have a you know something compatible to talk to it. So we can look into that and see if it's easy. I know I've talked to our our web developers about that kind of thing, so we can check into that. Indeed, they do, yes. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they produce nice heat maps that you can look at online. <coughs> Yeah, it's one portion of the of the biking community. It's one point of data. Mm -hmm. I had a second question, which is mm -hmm. totally unrelated, mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of challenging with all these kinds of things. Is how do we then reach out to people who don't have internet access? Yeah, yeah I think that's there, particularly about seniors who are more likely to be pedestrians, and how do they have access to this? So, um, I think. That leads into our next, I, we are trying to do multiple ways of engaging folks so that we can get, um, so we can make sure that we're getting a diverse, um, diverse feedback from a diverse group of people. And the online survey is just one piece of it. And you'll see that the exercise we're doing tonight is very similar to that. And um, at the first workshop, that's really, it's gonna be very similar. 
but there's something about doing it um, when you're talking with other people and it's more, you know, you're brainstorming, you're feeding off of each other. That's a little different than when you're doing it at home on a computer. So we think both are valuable. So um, to answer your question, we're gonna try to do community workshops and then I'm gonna talk in a minute about some of the community pop-ups where we're gonna go to people where they are and then there's opportunity for us to do interviews um, as well, which is coming up in my slides as well. So we're gonna try to make sure that we aren't relying on just one piece. So um, for the community, oh, yeah. Uh, the survey right now, we don't have it in Spanish, but we can talk to the city about getting that translated. I think that's a really, yeah. And like I said, it's just draft right now, so I think it'd be pretty, I think we can get that translated. <clears throat> so we're a little bit behind on our schedule, so I'm gonna um, move on to the next idea, but I do think that if you have other comments, um, I can send the development link to you guys, and then you can you know, play with it a little bit more, and then if you have little tweaks, we can do that, okay? So for the community workshops, as I mentioned, we were, were planning a number of those throughout the, um, throughout the process. We have one planned for July, and again, as I mentioned, that's really gonna be our first kickoff with the full public, where we really wanna get their feedback on what's working and what's not working, and um, start really thinking about vision for the community in terms of goals, principles, policies, and Highway 1. And then we also wanna use it as an opportunity for education um, and information sharing about what we've learned as well um, through the analysis part. So again, it's that kind of information in, information out. So I'm wondering from um, your perspective if you have guidance. We know that these workshops don't always, you know, get a ton of people. And so we want to we want to make sure that we plan it in the in the best way possible to um, get the most amount of people, um, especially people that we might not otherwise be getting in other in other venues. So if we're wondering if you have advice on certain days or times, what's worked um, and things you've done before. And then if you um, have advice on outreach specifically for the workshops. Let me uh, do a couple of things. You're, you're, you're right. I mean, if you have a workshop in July or August, uh, you know, people are summertime, uh, you're not getting anybody. It, it seems to me that if you can uh, jointly do these, for example, uh, we have a, a farmer's market every Saturday. Mm -hmm. That's one venue where you get lots of people that are just coming out, the local. We have uh, Shakespeare at the park, uh, which is, you know, again, brings some people out. And I'm sure there are other uh, venues that the city has. I think there's some other concerts, for example. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> it's in between. Just so you guys know, this is being taped, recorded, and then um, it's not on TV tonight, but it will have a link, and folks did not get to see it. So I know it's oh, a I small enough room we can speak and hear each other without the mic, but they can't get your audio without it. So I know that there was a, um, they did some, uh, kind of information gathering for a plan uh, Half Boom Bay a couple of years ago in Arlita Park. And it was kind of, you know, in, in the neighborhood, you got a, mm -hmm. a few, if you're, if you're really deep in the neighborhood and you have a neighborhood person who's ringing the bell to all of their neighbors, people will come out. Um, but other than that, it's, it's summer's really tough. Yeah. But September's a great month because it's before Pumpkin Festival. And if you're gonna do something in December, you won't get anybody either. January is a better month. So you got September and January and everything else is booked. What, what, what do you guys all think? Any feedback on that? So I was just going to add, um, last year the city made a real effort for National Night Out, which is early August. And so all the different neighborhoods were having activities. So again, kind of to what others have said, mm -hmm. that you get a concentration of local folks already engaging in their immediate local community. And depending how you develop this, mm -hmm. whether it's an information table or even getting information about, about the online survey, that that's... Mm -hmm. You're going to capture different folks there. And I, so I do want to, um, I'm going to 
flip ahead because we also really like this idea about the community pop-ups and going to where people are. And so we do have a number of those <coughs> planned. We have at least two planned and in one day we could even go to two different spots. So some things that we have talked about are the farmer's market, is the farmer's market going to a beach in the summer, you know, positioning kind of near the trail. And these are ones that we've really talked about doing in coordination with the um, parks master plan so that we could kind of tag team. They could be getting feedback, we could be getting feedback, and again, going to where people are. <clears throat> so we definitely like that. And I, I wrote down a number of those other ones that you mentioned as well that could be a possibility. So we've other ideas that have come up are Pumpkin Festival. Um, and we've talked about having one really focused on transportation disadvantaged populations, so people that depend more on biking and walking um, out of necessity. And so some of the ideas um, that came up were, you know, an afternoon at MacDutra Park uh, where folks are using the laundry, maybe they're coming out of church, um, um, a more Spanish-speaking population um, where we could reach a different audience that maybe wouldn't be coming to other meetings that we would be having. And so those are some ideas, and I... You're better off with those communities going to Main Street and going to Moon Ridge. Okay. I mean, that's where they all live. Mm -hmm. They've got lots of social services there, so plenty of connections, and, you know, they've got their own little network that they, when they get, you know, let the message out and stuff like that. But those are the people that are, are bicycling and walking down from Moon Ridge, which is on Miramontes Point, mm -hmm. on the highway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that we got to help. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good feedback. So I guess I, I kind of want to toggle between these two slides because um, I think we've had a lot of great ideas about different places we could go for these pop-ups. But I'm wondering, um, to the previous point about you know different ways of engaging people, and we have tentatively planned this July workshop. If if there were an existing event or existing um, or a, a, a certain place that if we needed to do it in, in it. July, Fourth of July put everybody. Let me add uh, something that, at least in the, in the past, works. Uh, if you develop a draft master plan mm -hmm. and you publish it in the newspaper, this is our draft master plan for either pedestrian and bicycles, uh, all of a sudden people are going to say, I haven't had a say in this and I want to have a say. So putting out a straw man, even if it's kind of weak or even if it's, you know, is a good way to get people that are really interested to come out. Okay. And so that timing wise, you know, maybe six months from now, if we have a straw man out there and we kind of have people, okay, this is what we're thinking about, have them come in. Uh, I went to a little workshop on, uh, on, on parks and, and rec about what, five, six weeks ago. In effect, they had little displays about what they were thinking about. Mm -hmm and gave everybody an opportunity to say, well, I like this and I don't like that. So from a timing standpoint, that might be a good way to draw at least people that are interested yeah. in commenting. So it's the content and the timing, probably. The library had this really cool triangle sort of um, presentation thing. And on, they had like, I don't know, five or six issues, like uh, aesthetic appearance, size, um, like mission, like how much of the community, how much, how deep would it go? And people had these like little, I don't know if anybody did it, but they had the little uh, cir colored circles. And you just get to put your colored circles on stuff. And it was mm -hmm. kind of cool. It was very, you know, or, you know, organic and analog, a little bit like the survey, but you could kind of see what people were thinking. It was really interesting. I thought it was very effective, so. Um. Yeah, I, I was actually involved in some of that, so I do know that, but those, those display things yes, yeah. can, were the output of several public outreach workshops which we're saying may not work for us, but actually work quite well for the library. They were very well attended. Well, and that's because they, they did it. They, and the, um, the, the, um, um, there, were, there were outreach meetings in Pescadero and, and all the different communities as well as around, around towns. So there was a lot of public input went into that. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Great. I, I th we'll take all of this feedback and talk to staff about uh, our approach. Um, I think that's great feedback. 
I mean, one of the things we could do is the BPAC committees, we could bicycle down Main Street with our sign and say, hey, you know, <laughs> fill out the survey. Fill out the survey. <laughs> yeah. We are going to rely on you for outreach. So. <laughs> um, <library>. Yeah. <laughs> Big signs. Um, another thing that we've talked about that we think um, will help us get, again, other perspectives in this plan are, are to do stakeholder interviews um, with folks that maybe, you know, aren't on this committee and aren't necessarily going to come to our open houses or that we think really provide a unique perspective or knowledge base that we should um, spend a little extra time with. So we've talked about some different groups that maybe um, we'll target. And we're thinking about this in the kind of late summer time frame as well, again, to get feedback on what's working, what's not working, and, and start to think about um, as we move into potential recommendations. Really have, and it can be an individual or it could be sitting down with the group at their, you know, at their meeting. And so some of the groups that we've thought about are really um, reaching out to public health agencies and getting their perspective. Um, San Mateo County officials, we know that San Mateo has a, a lot of, um, they've done bike and pedestrian um, planning and they have a perspective. The Latino Advisory Council, Senior Co-Siders, um, Post, and then Safe Routes to School organizations as well. Those are some that we've been brainstorming, but we're wondering if you guys have other ideas or thoughts of, of people that, that would be worth reaching out to. Yeah. Um, a couple that come to mind would be um, Bicycle Coalition. Um, I don't think Silicon Valley Bicycle Coalition necessarily comes out this way all that mm -hmm. often, but they might have some interest. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a mother, so I'm not involved, but I believe we have a Coastside Moms group okay. that I would think maybe would be yeah. a good place to get a, a parent perspective. Um, uh, and perhaps um, any disability advocate type of organizations like PARCA or something of that sort. Great, thank you. Uh, you know, Park is not really very local is the problem. And San Mateo County is not local. Mm -hmm. They do not have our best interest in heart, so I really don't care what they have to say. Um, we can put it in, but I mean, honestly, they haven't been doing well by us at all. We don't, that's why we don't have any parks. So I think really it's, you know, rather than going to social services, if you go to Moon Ridge directly, they do have a social services person there. Mm -hmm. She's boots on the ground. She knows how every one of her clients gets to work. Um, and Main Street is the same thing. I mean, if you set up tables in those places, and I'd, I personally would be happy to set up a table in those places. Um, another place is um, uh, the Mobile Pillar Cito's Manufactured Home Park, which is on airport. That's a horrible road to bicycle on. People, there's crosses everywhere. Um, and so th if you want to get into the Latino community, that's where you go. And if you want to, to get into the Latino community on Pillar Cito's, you go on Thursdays. Um, all three, that's when they're having, um, they have their uh, uh, food harvest, you know, comes and gives them food. Also at the Ted, Cock, at Ted Adcock Community, Community Center. So on Thursdays is a big day to reach out. You know, if we had everybody, you know, at each one of those places on Thursdays at, the, at Hungry Harvest, what do they call it? Um, and that way, that they're all out there. I mean, that's, that's how you get, you know, I do that for emergency prep. I have, I have another life. The, uh, the other issue, and I, and I think was just brought up, uh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're half Moon Bay, but obviously we had somebody from Montana here, and this is a, uh, a coast side issue. Uh, there's a Mid-Coast Community Council, for example, mm -hmm. which, if nothing else, we asked them to put, put this on their agenda, to publicize it. They might get some input from people that don't live in half Moon Bay, which is that's what's designed. The other one uh, that at least comes to mind is uh, Caltrans. Uh, I mean, they're certainly a uh, very big uh, stakeholder in this. Not sure whether they have a uh, person or a group that kind of focuses on pedestrian safety, bike safety, and things like that. That might be a good uh, group to kind of uh, talk to. The other one is, and I'm not sure whether there's a formal group of uh, dog owners. Uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, they are the ones that use the trails and pedestrians and so on. Uh, so I'm not sure there's a formal group of that. I mean, we have a dog park, for example, out near uh, Smithfield. It still uh, is a real group because they still have, I think they have nonprofit status and they had to, they had to earn the money for the, they, I, bet you, I bet the city could find a person for contact. So again, I mean, those are other things that are, I think are uh, at least some other options to focus Great. on. 
uh, let me just add one more. The um, the Happen Bay Chamber of Commerce and Convention and Visitors Bureau, just to get, yeah. they may be getting feedback from all the p folks that come out here yeah. to vacation, so adding that as well. Great, thank you. I kind of had a, just a question, really, mm -hmm. about, I know we have somebody on the on this committee from the Safe Routes to School. Mm -hmm. Is that going to get us connected to all of the schools in, in the district, or would we also go to each individual school separate, that's, that's, separately? Yeah. The school district is a large political body that does, has many tendrils, but if you actually show up with a, a, a thing at, fair, at, at uh, um, like Hatch while the moms and dads are biking their kids to the school, I can't mm -hmm. even tell you how bad it's been in the last couple of years. Um, we had a bridge go out. We had parents bicycling through the Safeway parking lot when cars weren't stopping for them. I mean, it's bad. They'll definitely have an opinion. Hmm. <laughs> Which is what you want, right? <laughs> yeah. And then there, there's there's fewer people that bicycle from their home to Farallon because it's really hilly, but a lot of people bicycle to El Granada, so that's another school. There's uh, three elementary schools, Hatch, uh, El Granada, and then there's the private schools, um, Seacrest and Wilkinson, which are also they're private schools, so the parents tend to be very keen on getting out and bicycling their, to their, their kids to school. And it's a huge problem. It's not safe at all. Great. Thank you for that feedback. Um, the last thing that we wanted to talk about that's um, part of our current engagement strategy is doing biking walking tours so we can actually get out and see and experience together as a group, but then also opening it up to um, potential other stakeholders and things like that. So we tentatively have that plan for late summer um, and we'll be looking um, to you guys for advice and for thoughts on routing and things like that as we as we plan that right now you know we're, we just have the concept that we that we think that this would be something good to do but I guess um, I'd heard that there has been a bike tour with the Planning Commission is that correct or I heard of one. was there a bike tour for oh okay okay so what, there was an opportunity to <laughs> to learn from other bike tours that have been done with with um, groups. But if it's something that you you all would be interested in, then I think um, that's something that we'll be planning for, and we'll work with staff to come up with routes and and to think about how we um, we want others to come, but we also can't have it be too big that it becomes a, a huge event. So so we'll we'll be planning for that in late summer. Is it just going to be on one day? It'll probably be, well, we haven't decided, we haven't planned yet for whether the biking and the walking will be in the same day. We've done it where they've both been in the same day before and it's worked and it's been kind of different, you know, different folks go on one or, you know, we've planned it so that they can go on. So there's different ways to do it, but it'd probably be on, on one day. Any other questions or comments, especially from the, the audience, if you haven't had a chance to chime in and want to chime in, especially related to outreach and engagement before we move on? Yes. Peter Cruz. And I'm on the board at uh, Cypress Cove and have been forever. And we have a newsletter. And oh, certainly... Great. If we need to canvas our, our members, there are about 250 people living there, and most of them walk into town, and many, many people ride bikes like I do. I've been a cyclist forever, and my, my wife and I ride bikes around town, so I think I'm maybe a good source for uh, Great. information. I'd just like to offer that. And also, I'm on the uh, stewardship committee of the Coastside Land Trust, Okay. And, and they're very interested in uh, uh, impact, environmental impacts, and things like that. And in fact, we, uh, we have a big piece of property yet over by Smithfield. And a lot of people park their cars. Um, you know Smithfield, mm -hmm. where the ballparks are, no doubt. And they park their cars there, and they, they walk around, uh, you know, two or three miles, five miles maybe. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of people walking through there. And I'm, I'm interested to know if ever those trails will be incorporated into the master plan. I mean, I, I just don't know at this time, but is that legitimate 
questions. <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely something that we can talk about. And I think, um, I don't know if staff wants to answer that question for us about the um, unimproved trails that go that go through it, will, will they be improved? Um, we were actually just talking about it today, but there are plans to improve it, um, but I don't really know the timing and on I, it. I mean, yeah. I think in the context of this plan, you yeah. know, we're right at the stage where we're looking at where are their needs, where are their issues, what, are, what does the community want to see go into this plan, and so we don't know, but everything's on the table right now. Yeah, and it's definitely something that as we talk about today, the existing conditions about improving um, unimproved trails like that, that's the kind of thing that we want to know that end up on the map. There's another HOA that's in Happen Bay called Sandy Cove, and they've got a lot of people that walk from there. Um, there's another HOA um, down by Miramontes. I don't think that they walk or bike too much, but they'd be worth looking. They're ocean corners. Um, and then there's, uh, like, there's the Mormon Church in Moss Beach. There's the Lutheran Church that's um, by Casa del Mar. The Methodist Church in Half Moon Bay. Holy Family and the Catholic Church. There's five churches, and you know, if you sat out in front, they go there every Sunday, I hear. Hi, my name is Kristen Kohler. This is just in regard to the outreach and engagement portion. Um, I there's a huge community and it's an online community and it's called Next Door. And thousands of people read this every time and there's a lot of participation going on. People, you know, you get pings all the time. It's kind of like Facebook, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, but it's just for the neighborhoods and they are active. Oh, good. So this, good. Is, this is a place to outreach to talk to people or touch them. Yeah, that's great, thank you. Okay. So you, you'll see it. We have a, a routine. So I'm glad you, it's still working. That's good. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm going to move through the next uh, portion fairly quickly because I do want to start the conversation around goals and policies, but um, we're not going to be able to go through everything today. So basically, you're getting homework tonight. <laughs> um, but we're going to go over where we are with goals and policies, and then I'm going to ask you to review the draft policies from the general plan so that we can have another conversation about, about policies at a follow-up meeting. So otherwise we would be staring at lots of words all night, and I really want to be able to get to the map as well. Um, so our biggest question is, as we begin this process, is do the city's existing guiding principles and policies from the draft general plan and local coastal um, program, do they represent the vision for biking and walking in Half Moon Bay? Is there anything missing or should anything be revised or revisited? So we, we've been looking through the existing policies and they're very, you know, they were recently completed, they went through a lot of engagement, but they are still draft. So we want to make sure that um, instead of re restarting from scratch and saying we have to come up with policies, we really want to build from the work that's already been done, but we also want to check in and make sure that they really are representing what we want to, um, as a community, what we want to take forward into the plan. So uh, I have pulled some of the key kind of guiding principles. Um, the most relevant one from the guiding principles is the promote pedestrian, bicycle, and transit mobility, increased connectivity between the city's neighborhoods, and enhanced coastal and open space access. So that's one of the guiding principles for the general plan. And then there are certain elements within the draft right now that have guiding principles that are very relevant. Um, so the circulation element that's draft um, has guiding principles, or I'm sorry, the guiding policies related to complete streets, creating a functional and cohesive transportation network, pedestrian and bicycle travel um, related to scenic routes, and transportation demand management. Again, a lot of words up there, but what we're asking from, from, from your perspective is to review uh, these and then we can come back and discuss. And we've also done an audit, which I'll kind of share some of our perspectives on, on what we, based on our assessment. And then there's also a draft 
in the draft circulation element, there is a proposed bicycle and pedestrian network. And again, because it's the general plan, it is very general, which is appropriate. Um, and so we have the opportunity to get a little bit more detailed. But this is something that we are going to want to look at. And um, again, you know, a lot of community input went into these maps, so we want to build from it. But we also want to evaluate and make sure that um, we're not just taking it because it's law. It's, it's still draft, and we want to have the opportunity to discuss and evaluate. And to, we also have the opportunity to get more detailed. <clears throat> There's also the general plan healthy community element, um, which has a number of uh, policies related to active transportation, um, equity, active living, community vitality, inclusive governance. I thought that was a um, really good one, talking about how we do this kind of planning. Um, and recreation needs. And then there's also the draft coastal access and recreation um, policies, which relate more towards coastal access. Um, but again, a lot of that relates to uh, walking and biking. So when the LCP and the general plan have been sort of disassociated, the LCP is now in front of the general plan. How will that affect our planning? Is that the LCP becomes hierarchical then? general plan has to match it, not the other way around. <laughs> Jill, do you want to? Sorry, I had to ask you. A good question. So yes, um, these two um, highest level planning documents were moving forward in pa parallel. The local coastal land use plan, which is the policy portion of the LCP, local coastal program and the general plan elements. And we were, um, we have first public drafts of both of those out, and that's what these were pulled from. Um, we are going to finish the local coastal land use plan first. Um, that was council's direction. Um, that doesn't mean that we have anything really awkward going on with you because we're going to check in on the policies in both of those documents. I want the I hope we get the feedback on the local coastal land use plan right away because we're moving forward with the planning commission. And in fact, the last item on your agenda, I think you'll find interesting about how we're going to uh, engage you a little bit with the planning commission on that. But they're both draft and input on both is absolutely what, as Dara was describing, what we're looking for. It's okay to find something that's missing and, and help us out. and or to, to tweak it, or maybe we got it wrong and we need to get rid of a policy. Also, you're getting homework, which is going to have a lot more on it than this. There's, there's I'm sorry to say, but and that I think you'll find a lot of food for thought in it. So um, we're looking forward to your, your look at that. Yeah, and Carol provided the links to all of these documents, but there, I was, um, these are just the guiding policies, but there's implementing policies as well that have more detail about how those policies would be implemented. And a number of them, especially in those three elements, really relate to um, bicycle and pedestrian planning. So we know that you know, th there is this opportunity to really build from that work. So some of the things that we, at, when we looked through, again, um, just thinking about what could be strengthened or what could be uh, what's what's missing that we would normally try to include in a bicycle and pedestrian plan and I think there's also opportunities to do different things there could be things in the bicycle and pedestrian plan that are maybe more specific because it is a general plan and this is a little bit more of a specific plan so but these are just some of the topics that we were looking at so coming up with perf performance standards um, for um, pedestrian and bicycle needs so that you understand how you're doing over time. Um, coming up with uh, priority for vulnerable users so that when you're making decisions about streets or intersections, you're prioritizing vulnerable users. This is not to say that this is something the city has to do, but this is just something that we didn't see in there that we've seen in other cities that is worth um, both the city's consideration and this group's consideration. Um, additional policies around maintenance. There are some policies in there right now but maybe there's an opportunity to increase this because, um, you know, 
if you come up with a great plan and you implement something but you don't have the funds or the means to maintain it over time, you're, um, you're not going to be able to keep it going. So um, opportunity for potential additional policies related to maintenance. Um, there are Vision Zero policies, both um, in the healthy community element and in the circulation element. Um, and there's just an opportunity to make sure that they're consistent and that there's, there's even opportunity to strengthen it if it's something that the city and the planning commission, everybody's interested in. A vision zero policy. Um, zero, it's a, it's a safety policy um, with a goal of zero deaths. Oh. And there's, there's different ways of approaching vision zero policy. Um, you can have a policy within your general plan and then you can also come up with a larger city policy that has a, um, a number of different steps to achieve it. Uh, it. It's kind of like a complete streets policy where it bec can become its own policy with um, strategies to implement it. And there's a national network around Vision Zero. We can get into some of those more details as we, as we dig into more of the safety analysis and things like that. And then there's also opportunities. There's In the current general plan, there's a, a, a lot of discussion about level of service, which is this is getting a little bit technical early on in the process, but level of service is one way of measuring how, um, measuring transportation. And there's an opportunity to also think about vehicle miles traveled as a metric. And this is something that statewide is, um, during environmental review, we're moving more towards vehicle miles traveled as a way that is looking less at how, um, fast cars can go through, but um, are, are we actually adding or reducing miles? So it's a, it's a way of measuring service um, that tends to favor bicycle and pedestrian travel. So it's just one consideration within the general plan. So as you're reviewing this, um, and Jill kind of alluded to this, but we'll have an opportunity to in our, in our next meeting, um, talk more about policy and really think about this overarching vision and ensuring that the, that the vision that we're moving forward with for our plan um, really represents what you as the BPAC and the city generally um, thinks should go forward. And I think it's really important just to say from a policy perspective, sometimes policy can be a little bit dry and there's a lot of words, but it's really important as we begin to prioritize projects and to think about what's really important to this community. And the policies help us make those decisions. And if we don't have good policies that really state why, why we're doing this and why it's important, then when we get down to the project, you know, we have a giant list of projects, but projects, how do we prioritize? How do we make sure that one is done before the other? Um, and it's the policies and the goals that really help us get there. So it's important that we do spend time on it, um, but we're fortunate that we get to build off policies um, versus starting from scratch because there's already been a lot of great work done. So one of the things as we're talking about kind of goals for the, for the community and we're, we're um, thinking about how we're gonna make decisions and frame the plan is there's an opportunity to really think about Highway 1 um, and building off of the work from the general plan is to really think about what is the vision for Highway 1. Um, there's been discussion at the general plan level to really think about reducing the speed along Highway 1 so that it becomes more of a boulevard instead of an ex ex expressway within the community. Um, there's been discussion in the comments about creating more of a gateway as you enter Half Moon Bay. So we really want to work with this group and to, to think about and with the Planning Commission to think about that vision for Highway 1. And it's something that could really be represented in this plan. Um, in the feedback that we've reviewed so far, there's, with, for the general plan, there's been a lot of discussion about the need for access across Highway 1 to access uh, the coast. And so how can you do that in a safe way? And so really thinking about Highway 1 and, it, and making sure that we're thinking about it and really thinking about the vision is important. So with that, 
We're going to move into the mapping exercise, but I wanted to make sure we had time for a few questions before we move into the exercise. So any questions on policy, um, what we're asking of you? Any questions? Sometime early on, I'd mm -hmm. certainly love to have a uh, <clears throat> maybe a draft of some other communities plan yeah that we can kind of look at and just to get a feel for uh, what uh, you know what it looks like and what we're kind of working towards I think that's a great idea and we can definitely do that for the next meeting and maybe even send it around as um, a follow-up to this meeting and that way as you're reviewing the policies from the general plan you can see you know you can evaluate them based on looking at the level of policies from other plans. I think that's a great idea. Kind of related point, um, I believe the county has a bicycle pedestrian yes. master plan that I think it would be important for us to consider what the, how we connect to outside of the city limits. Yeah, and I will say um, one of our, one of the first things that we've been working on in addition to the outreach and engagement strategy is a policy review of all of the relevant documents and so we have reviewed that but I think it's a great thing to share so that you can review it as well um, and then you know there are other plans that are relevant to to this area that we could consider sharing as well other questions comments okay so I've mentioned this already, but what we're going to be doing is breaking up into, I think, two groups and uh, working with maps. And we basically, as I mentioned, we're, we're asking you for your input on the existing conditions in Half Moon Bay so that we can make sure that we know the key issues, we know the things that are working well, and the things that um, could use improvement as we begin this process. So we're going to break up into two groups. and. Audience members, please do join us. And we have basically an assignment, color-coded assignment, and we're asking you to draw on maps, work with each other, um, opportunity to get to know each other too if you don't already know each other. Um, and the first one is to indicate where you like to bike, um, where you feel safe and comfortable, um, where you like to walk, and then indicating barriers, so these can be um, and or areas that need improvement so that we can understand both things that are working well and things that could use improvement. And this is also an opportunity, as I mentioned, it's similar to what's in the survey, um, but it's an opportunity again to, to get your knowledge of the community down on the paper for us and for us to hear it and not just see it as a survey result. So. Um, yeah, I think with that, maybe we'll kind of split down the middle of the room. So um, Mario over is one group, and you guys are another group. I think, did we lose Bill? Did he leave? Oh, OK. <laughs> so I think that if we, um, if the folks in the back join this side, then if you join this side, then I think we'll be pretty even. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. perfect. Basically, just half the people go to one table, half yeah. them to another. You can split yourself however you like. And end up needing another. Okay, not too bad. The general plan policies and again when you're reviewing them you're looking for do these kind of represent the things that you think are important for Half Moon Bay and then we can revisit and have a, a, another conversation um, around goals and policies and then uh, we will share the draft online survey with you so you can provide any additional feedback but then once it's ready to go live um, we're, we are requesting that you share the survey with your networks. 
And then um, our next meeting is going to be on June 27th as a joint meeting with the Planning Commission. And that's where we are going to be able to discuss um, policy in a little bit more detail. And then we'll also be discussing the Highway 1, um, the vision for Highway 1 and, and discussing that with the Planning Commission. Is it? Yeah, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I don't have my calendar in front of me. Um, and the city will send the official notice for that, yep. And then we need to still, we, we've got a lot of great feedback on the community workshop, so stay tuned for that and what we do. But we know that this summer we're going to be having activities, um, whether it's a workshop or some of the pop-up events um, and, and stakeholder interviews, that's going to be happening over the summer. So stay tuned for more information on that. And that's all that we have. So I don't know, if Carol, as the official chair, if you want to end the meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we'll, we'll do the same thing for the online survey. We'll send it out and put a due date for comments for that so that the city can then review it and then we can get it going. Same thing, making sure that we're getting feedback on that. But that's going to be, when it's live, that's going to be up for a while. Yes, yes that'll, that'll be, be uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there's a Right, right, that's the next meeting. Right, there's no meeting. The 27th of July. June 27th of July. Oh, June, yes, correct. It's the 4th Tuesday. June 27th of July. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Oh, any additional questions? I was just going to ask, do we have an ongoing meeting schedule? It sounds like that'll be our June meeting. Do we know when we have a regular? We're working, we're cobbling it together, so we'll, we'll send you a schedule and you know, sort of fall out. Yeah. And we understand that um, people may be on vacation in the summer, so that may be a little bit light through the summer. Yeah. Great, thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.